After the first Starship orbital flight explosion, Elon Musk vowed the world would see a second Starship launch within a few months after its maiden flight in April. And the billionaire is keeping his promise. SpaceX recently filed a permit with the Federal Communications Commission requesting authorization for operation as soon as June 15th, but anytime until December 15th. The document states the purpose of the mission is an experimental orbital demo and recovery of the Starship test vehicle, suggesting the world could see the craft leave our planet. The mission, which would launch from Boca Chica in Texas, involves the super heavy booster flying back to the Gulf of Mexico, touching down 495 seconds after liftoff. The Starship's upper stage will achieve orbit before landing in the Pacific Ocean, northwest of the Hawaiian island Kauai, around 90 minutes after launch. The STA extends the information in previous grant 0145 EXST 2023 and is necessary to authorize Starship test flight two vehicle communications from the launch pad at Boca Chica, Texas, and the experimental recovery operation following the Starship test vehicle demo launch. Trajectory data will be provided directly to NTIA, USAF, and NASA. Launch Licensing Authority is the FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation. Yeah, the FCC license is certainly not enough for the Starship to fly, but the SpaceX team is also rushing to complete the rest of this calculation. And you know, we are talking about stage zero progress. On Friday, May 19th, SpaceX released a 20-second video demonstrating that it's already conducting tests on technology aimed at fortifying the ground beneath its enormous Starship rocket's orbital launch pad. Remember, the launch pad, situated at SpaceX's Starbase facility in South Texas, endured significant damage during the inaugural test flight of a fully integrated Starship vehicle on April 20th. During the test flight, the sheer power of the Super Heavy Rocket's 33 Raptor engines created a substantial crater beneath the pad. As a result, chunks of shattered concrete were sent soaring through the air. SpaceX founder, chief engineer Elon Musk, shared that SpaceX is actively developing a solution to mitigate such damage. He said they plan to build a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount. The footage of the test shows a methane-fueled Raptor engine ignited with its beam hitting a steel plate and a massive stream of water. One hell of a plasma beam, Musk shared when he shared the video via Twitter. Yes, this is just a single Raptor engine, not 33. However, it's crucial to take into account the increased surface area and size of a complete water-cooled steel plate, as well as the distance and test footage. Judging by the size of the Raptor engine, it seems that the steel plate is positioned approximately 7 meters away from the engine. This distance is considerably closer compared to the space between the top of the orbital launch mount and the ground, where a full-scale platform will eventually be installed. In reality, factoring in all aspects, the distance will be around twice as long, roughly 15 meters. Given these circumstances, this test is truly impressive and must be instilling confidence in SpaceX. Based on this test, engineers can contrast a robust structure capable of supporting such immense power. Altogether, the 33 Raptor engines generate over 17 million pounds of thrust, highlighting their tremendous capacity. The bigger challenge for SpaceX will be getting the FAA to examine its steel plate in order to approve another launch test in the coming months. The FAA has confirmed that no injuries resulted from the launch test, but it's also said that no new tests will be approved if there's a threat to public safety. Regardless, we can completely believe that having the first flight, there will be the next one for Starship, and the latter will definitely be a lot better. Let's explain. In the face of rocket explosions, SpaceX has always demonstrated a remarkable ability to leverage failure as a catalyst for growth. Rather than being discouraged by setbacks, the company views each incident as an opportunity to learn, adapt, and improve. After a rocket explosion occurs, SpaceX initiates a meticulous analysis process aimed at understanding the underlying causes of the failure. Through this rigorous investigation, the company strives to uncover any weaknesses in its systems, components, or processes. A notable example of SpaceX's response to a rocket explosion is the 2015 incident involving the Falcon 9 during a launch pad test. Following the explosion, SpaceX undertook an extensive investigation to determine the root cause of the failure. This thorough analysis revealed a faulty strut as the culprit. Armed with this newfound knowledge, SpaceX promptly implemented enhanced quality control measures and testing procedures to prevent a similar occurrence in the future. 
The discovery of the faulty strut marked a pivotal learning opportunity for SpaceX. It emphasized the importance of meticulous attention to detail in all aspects of rocket manufacturing, assembly, and testing. By identifying the specific issue and addressing it directly, SpaceX bolstered its quality control processes, ensuring that such vulnerabilities were minimized or eliminated moving forward. Besides, SpaceX's strength in iterative design and engineering is evident in its response to rocket explosions. The company embraces a philosophy of continuous improvement, consistently refining its rocket designs and engineering practices based on lessons learned from each incident. For example, following a 2016 explosion during a routine fueling operation, SpaceX undertook a comprehensive reassessment of the Falcon 9 rocket's design. As a result of this evaluation, SpaceX introduced a densified propellant system in subsequent iterations of the Falcon 9. This modification not only enhanced the rocket's overall performance, but also improved fuel efficiency. Through iterative design and engineering, SpaceX has evolved its rockets, making them safer, more efficient, and more reliable. The company's ability to incorporate lessons learned from rocket explosions has enabled it to push the boundaries of space exploration, setting new industry standards and paving the way for advancements in reusability and cost-effectiveness. And after all, as we see now, the Falcon 9 has now emerged as not only the flagship of SpaceX, but also a dominant force within the space rocket industry. Their most recent triumph came with a successful Axiom launch, marking yet another remarkable achievement for SpaceX. A legendary astronaut, two Saudis, and a wealthy adventurer blasted off atop the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket Sunday for a trip to the International Space Station, the second private astronaut mission aimed at opening the high frontier to commercial development. The nine Merlin engines powering the Falcon 9's first stage roared to life at 5.37 p.m. EDT, quickly throttled up to 1.7 million pounds of thrust, and smoothly pushed the rocket away from the historic Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. Arcing away on a northeasterly trajectory, the slender rocket put on a spectacular weekend sky show, thrilling thousands of area residents and tourists lining nearby roads and beaches before disappearing into a high deck of clouds. After boosting the rocket out of the thick lower atmosphere, the reusable first stage, making its maiden flight, fell away and headed for landing back at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station while the Falcon 9's second stage continued to push to orbit. In past Crew Dragon flights, booster stages landed on offshore barges and were towed back to shore for refurbishment and reuse. But past experience showed actual performance was better than expected, leaving enough propellant on board to reverse course and return to the launch site. Heralded by twin sonic booms, the AX-2 first stage dropped out of the clouds and settled to a picture-perfect touchdown eight minutes after liftoff. One minute later, the Crew Dragon capsule slipped into orbit and separated from the Falcon 9 second stage. Thanks for putting your trust in the Falcon 9 team. Hope you enjoyed the ride to space. Radioed SpaceX Chief Engineer Bill Gerstenmeyer, NASA's former Director of Space Flight Operations. Have a great trip on Dragon. Welcome home to Zero G, Peggy. It's good to be here, Whitson replied from orbit. It was a phenomenal ride. All in all, we believe that Starship definitely also has a promising future. The Mars dream will still be there as long as SpaceX and Elon Musk are here. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.